All right, we are back here for the capstone match for this league. 4-0. Can we get the 5-0? Is that asking too much? We'll see. We'll see. That one is coming in just a few seconds. But before then, I want to let you know, if you like my content, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you get any enjoyment, any information out of my videos. And that is all that I'm going to say about that. Yeah, let's jump straight into match five here. All right, we're here for the match. See how it goes. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Ready as ever. Playing against BRBN. BRB would usually stand for Be Right Back. I don't know what the N would stand for in this case. I don't think that we can keep a hand where our first play is a Arboreal Grazer on turn three, sadly. I guess we could draw any untapped green source to make this better, but... Now nah, it's just mulligan. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is why you mulligan. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll keep. And the card we put on the bottom here is probably Grazer, sad to say, as... With our current setup, these uh, six cards in hand to play a turn three Titan, so. And we get the uncounter ability with our Cavernous Souls, too, potentially. Scalding Tarn, go. Okay, okay. Um, Do we risk taking the two damage just to prevent our opponent from knowing that we have a Cavern of Souls? I don't think so. It feels really bad to just be like, hey, look at this Cavern of Souls. But, I mean... I ain't paying no life for this turn one amulet. It's not happening. And of course we're putting Cavern on Giant here because I find it more likely our opponent has interaction for our Primeval Titan than for a Dryad on turn two. Ketria Triome. Well, we could be playing into a potential um, remand or mana leak or something here. We'll see, we'll see. We can play Azusa and play Breeding Pool Shocked into Rot Farm and immediately have Dryad mana. So, there's that. Perhaps our opponent lets an Azusa resolve, thinking that it's less important than a Dryad. Or uh, we could play Garenbrig into Rot Farm. Now that doesn't make sense because this would have an Amulet trigger. So, let's play our Rot Farm here and lead on the Azusa. Of course, we gotta pick up the rot farm. Uh oh, our opponent has a response. Remand? Mana leak. Well, I'm really glad that they leaked our Azusa and not our Dryad. Unfortunately, this does put us a land behind, but maybe we can manage. If our opponent just slams an Uro here. Or Rin and Six. Perfect. Fine with me. Now I'm really, really glad that we let Azusa. <laughs> Ooh, and now we have a Crumbling Vestige so we don't get a mana behind. I'm liking where this uh, hand is moving towards. Definitely need to make a green here. Dryad. Straight into play. Garenbrig, straight into play, so we have guaranteed Titan mana this upcoming turn. I suppose it's not guaranteed because we don't have enough green sources, but... Opponent is playing a white, red, blue, and green. You know what that means. This is another Omnath soup build. Suppose our opponent could have Force of Negation here, and that would be pretty annoying. Uro, okay, okay. That one will get Bajuka bogged if our opponent is not prepared for our Titan play. Let's lead on the Summoner's Pact, I suppose. Alright, well that worked. So, let's play... Forest into a rot farm so we can get our uncounterable giant into play here. Don't want to activate Garen Brig for this one. Alrighty. Let's uh, float an uncounterable green for our giant. And do we just pick up the rot farm to have a bounce land in hand? I don't hate that. 
I guess we do, although we might need to have plenty of green sources in play for our summoner's pack. Maybe that's wrong. Let's just pick up the vestige. And here goes the big man. Let's see the main board Aether Gust opponent. All right, we're definitely going for the haste here. I'm not playing around a brazen borrower or something ridiculous like that. And this way we can still point a couple of Valakut triggers at our opponent's Renin 6, I suppose? Might as well get their Planeswalker out of play. Just in case our opponent has something to answer our Titan, we'll still get some value out of its entering the battlefield. So, there's that. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and put this Hanweer on the stack. Do they have a path? Hmm. Well, we might have trouble answering this Uro. Okay, let's get a regular forest. And send this Valka trigger upstairs. Yeah? Hmm. I suppose maybe we could have played around path by getting Bajuka Bog and uh, Valakut. I don't know if that would have made any significant difference. We might still be fine here. We can just play land, land. And uh, kill our opponent's Uro if they do escape it. So we may not be looking too bad. We'll just have to see. Of course, we could always just top deck another Primeval Titan and uh, be totally fine. But I have to admit, I was not really thinking of our opponent's deck as a path to exile deck, and I don't know why. That was just my mistake. We might still be fine here, but regardless, I think that I think that playing around our opponent's path to exile would have been better than just going straight for the haste. That was a little bit uh, a little bit suspect of me. Are we going to be using Battlements this turn? Maybe. Uh, we'll do this. Tap the Rock Farm. There we go. Explore, huh? Um, let's point some Valka triggers at our opponent's Uro first things first. Play our breeding pool here. I want to get the full information of whether we've killed our opponents or not before we cast this explorer because they might have a counter spell for the explorer. Path for the dryad. That's uh, pretty annoying. We will search. Okay. Here's the explorer. We can still cast a titan if we drew it, and uh, fortunately we don't. Unfortunately, I should say. That's what I thought I said, but it may not have come through that way. Well, let's just draw a Titan off the top. We still have the Cavernous Holes in play, so... We're not completely out of this game yet. If we do lose, it's specifically because I didn't play around Path to Exile, though, so... And you know what? That's okay. I'm fine with it, because when I make a mistake and I learn, that means you guys learn as well, so... We're all gaining from this exchange, regardless of whether I'm losing or not, so... Turn timber, huh? There's no way our opponent doesn't have a counter spell for this, but I mean, there's. I guess we're only one land drop away from being able to cast a Titan and turn timber in the same turn, thanks to Garenbrig. Hmm. So does that mean we wait on this? I mean, every turn we wait gives our opponent an additional two card draws, one from the Uro and one from their draw step. So I guess it's just a now or never, but doesn't feel like the best thing in the world. See, that's five, six, seven. Yeah. Of course, our opponent has a counter spell here.
Looks like it might be cryptic command by the likes of it. All right, well, we'll pass it back. We don't even have a field of the dead to trigger with our gruel turf or anything like that, so we'd be in much better shape if we had gotten Bajuka Bog instead of going for the blind haste there. Does our opponent just have a bolt in hand here? They're going to bounce our amulet, draw a bolt, attack us, bolt, bolt. <laughs> it's definitely possible. Okay, well, uh, let's play our amulet and see if they force this or counter this in some way. Nope. All right, let's play the Summoner's Pack and see if they have the answer for that one. All right. So, yeah, we lost this game because I played into Path to Exile. Yikes. Let's uh, not make that mistake again. We want our Relics and our Negates. We want the Beast Withins, I'm pretty sure. And I think that's about it. We can trim on these grazers. They can be the first to go. One turn timber seems a fine trim, and one summoner's pack as well. Explosive seems bad, and possibly an amulet. I like amulet, though. Maybe we only need two beasts within. I don't know. Our opponent has planeswalkers and stuff, though. Possibly Ashiox and whatnot. So, Beast Within seems fine. Not great, but fine. We could trim a Garen Brig, actually. That might be better than trimming an Amulet. Yeah, we'll do that. We're likely to get to Titan Mana naturally here, so... We'll play first. And it's very slow. We can Vesuva our opponent's blue land almost assuredly to be able to cast our Negate. We have a Beast Within. Does that mean that it's good enough, though? We're missing... Several lands. If we draw a bounce land, then we can pick up our Vesuva and play it as a bounce land to suddenly spike our way up to six mana very quickly, but... Uh, and we do have a Garen Brig, so we don't need to draw that many lands horses, especially if our opponent plays a blue-green Triome, so... It's kind of rough, but I'll keep it. We'll lead on field. Pass it back. Maybe this hand shouldn't be a keep. I don't know. Amulet is a nice one. We'll play our Garen Brig out. We do need to top deck a few lands here, though. However, if our opponent gets a blue source here, then we can stop our opponent from turn three Ashiocking us. And in doing so, we might line ourselves up to cast a Primeval Titan immediately after as well. Shame that this uh, island had to be an island and not a blue-green source. We could play Growth Chamber, but that plays into Field of Ruin. Is that fine? It might be. And that way we can cast Titan this upcoming turn off of Vesuva Coffee and Growth Chamber. So I guess we're doing it. Not super excited about it, but we are doing it. And we can yield here. So this way we're holding up Negate and Beast Within, which I like. I'll just pass it back. Not yielding here, but doing things one at a time so our opponent can't cast an instant and trip us up. Do we uh, negate this Growth Spiral? I think that we have to let it go. It's more important to stop an Ashiok from resolving than it is to stop our opponent from ramping. So it does let our opponent hold up Cryptic Command this upcoming turn, though, so... I guess we can end of turn beast within a land so that they can't hold up cryptic, but then they probably just cryptic counter bounce our growth chamber and set us back to the stone age, so probably not. <laughs> There's the field ruin. All right, well. 
Yes, we could Vesuva copy and Growth Chamber and pick up the actual Growth Chamber, so we still have access to a Bounce Land here in the face of our opponent's Field Ruin. I don't hate that. And I guess we pick up the Garen Brig even there, so that we get to keep one of these two in play and have access to our Negate. I don't know, it's very awkward. We could also just Vesuva Raugren Triome. This is the Jeskai one, right? It still doesn't help us for Garen Brig purposes. Awkward. Don't want to set ourselves back a land drop, though, by picking up the growth chamber itself. That seems kind of stupid. I mean, it might be necessary, though. We're, we'd only be two lands away from activating Garen Brig, even if they did field us, since we get a basic for it, though. So we're not too, too far from tightening. I don't know. Let's go for the Raugren Triome, I guess. Doesn't feel great, but it's what we got, so it's what we're doing. And of course, we're just passing here. Our opponent's probably just going to field ruin our Simic Growth Chamber on the instep here, since they can use their mana, but we have not yet been able to use ours. I suppose we can float with the Growth Chamber, and then get a basic, and be able to Beast Within on our instep if we really wanted to. Growth Spiral, that's fine. Now they get to do this and field ruin us? It's kind of a shame. I guess we could beast we could have beast within the field of ruin in response to the scalding tarn to stop this. Maybe that would have been better. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe beast within the field would have been a good play, but Hmm. Yeah, we just gotta let this go, I think. I don't really plan on casting this beast within to just hit a land that doesn't seem impactful enough. Skyclave Apparition. That's not one I expected at all. Um, I don't think we care about that too much, though. Now that we're run out of bounce lands, we're not really relying on this amulet anyway, so let's just let that one go through. Cavern of Souls, huh? All right, well, we'll play our field. Get our tap land out of the way and pass it back. We can cast Titan this upcoming turn thanks to our Forest and Garen Brig, but it wouldn't be uncounterable. It might be better to wait one turn to get this Cavern online. Of course, it depends on what our opponent does here. If we can manage to end of turn Beast within one of these untapped lands and stop our opponent from holding up interaction for our Titan, that might be a great plan. I'm super into that because now we can get a bog to clean up this uro mess yeah let's do that get out of here Raugren triome whoa it just happened okay cool all right let's uh do the titan thing i suppose here he comes oh and we win cool I mean, we're triggering Field of the Dead there and getting the Jukabog, so I can understand why our opponent would scoop to save time. <sighs> Any changes? Skyclave Apparition doesn't really bother me. It does make me potentially want to trim an amulet, but at the same time, if they Apparition away one of our amulets, then a second amulet actually becomes somewhat more valuable. Obviously not by a whole lot there, as we didn't even need our amulet to function. In fact, I'm not sure that Skyclave Apparition in our opponent's deck is good against us. Against the, like, uh, the taxes-type builds, where they can really put us off guard by getting our Dryad and stuff with Skyclave, it's much better against us. But against a controlling opponent, I don't think that getting our Amulet or even a Dryad out of play is really helping them that much going long-term. Could be wrong, though. It's especially because it's a three-mana sorcery, though. Maybe cutting the Garenbrig is still fine. Yeah, I don't think I want to change anything, surprisingly, so we'll run it back. I'm a little surprised that that game ended up working out for us, not gonna lie. Man, if we had a single untapped land, then we'd have a turn 2 Titan hand here, but we're still, still keeping it. We're a little exposed to Ash Yawk, potentially, but we'll deal. We will deal with that as it comes. 
We do have three Beast Withins in our deck to deal with an Ashiok ourselves, if we happen to draw one, that is. All right, here's Valakut and pass back. Trying to get a colored source out here. I don't think we have any engineer explosives in our deck, however, though, so maybe it doesn't really make any sense, but. Actually, we still have turn two Titan here, thanks to the pack being able to get Azusa or Dryad here, depending on what our opponent does. If they just slam Renin Six, then they might. <laughs> they are in for a nasty surprise. I suppose we could get um, ruined here by Force of Negation. Okay, so let's do this. We'll play an amulet. Let me make sure about this. So we play Grulter, float to play Amulet. I don't... Let's see. We play Amulet, leaving the green floating. Summon is packed for Arboreal Grazer. Play Grazer with the green, Grulter. Explore, Grulter, again, Titan. So we do have a route to Titan this turn. As long as our Amulet resolves here. Oh, we don't want to yield to this, though. I guess we could have left the Gruel Turf in play, so we could use Vesuva here. It's fine. Our opponent seems to be F6. I'm just going to go for it. We don't have Grazer! I completely forgot that we sided out Grazer. <laughs> oh boy. That's embarrassing. Yeah, let's get this Azusa, guys. This is fantastic. Okay, yeah, let's just, uh, you know, pass the turn back. It's all good, it's all good. <laughs> that was... Wow. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> well, you heard it here. Do not forget that the cards you put into your sideboard are no longer in your main deck. Pay attention to details like that. Even if we had a single copy of, of our Boil Grazer, we would have been fine there, but <laughs> usually it's not that relevant. I, I'm sure several of you watching were like knocking on the, your freaking laptop screen saying, no, don't do it. You don't have Grazer. You sided it out. What are you doing? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I know you were trying to tell me, but... um. You know what? We'll just let it go. It happens. We're still 4-1, and one, and that is a good enough record for me. I apologize for throwing that last game like I did. I did not intend for that, obviously, but, I mean, let's be honest. It was entertaining. Anyways, I will see you guys for the next league. This is Red Face Menace, signing off.